Hello, welcome to Git and GitHub, a crash course by Prabhup Sharma. So in this crash course, we will learn about the concept of Git, the working of Git and why was Git introduced. And also we will learn these basic Git commands. So let's get started. So let's start with what is a Git. So Git is a version control system for tracking changes in computer files. It was created in 2005 by Linus Torvald for development of Linux kernel. And it is a distributed version control because multiple developers work on the local machine and also we have a repository in the git server so it's a distributed and it helps coordinating work between multiple developers and it is used to track who made what changes and when and we can revert back at any time and it has a local and a remote repository so let's continue with the concept of git so it helps us keep track of code history it takes snapshot of our files and we decide when to take the snapshot by making a commit so basically making a commit means taking a snapshot and then we can visit any snapshot or commit at any time and we can stage the file before committing let us learn how we can install the git in our machine so if you're using linux debian then you can use sudo apt get install git and if you're using fedora then you can say sudo em install git and if you're using mac then using homebrew you can say brew install git and if you're using a windows machine then you can follow this link to download the git in your machine so let's start with the basic command so before we start the basic command let's go ahead and create a new folder you can say git tutorial okay and now let me go to the git tutorial folder okay so currently we don't have anything in this folder and let's start with the basic commands so basically the first command we'll be learning is the git init which will basically initialize a local git repository so if i say git init okay so if i say git init then it will initialize a empty git repository in this particular git tutorial folder and if you check here i don't have anything but it creates a hidden folder dot git if i go to my dot git and if i check ls you can see we have certain head we have config description hooks and all so we don't have to really bother about this so let's go back to our git folder okay so let's continue with our next command so basically we have git add which is basically file it add file or files into the index so currently if you can see we don't have any files or folders in this particular git tutorial folder so let's go ahead and create a couple of files if you want to create a file using a terminal then you can say touch and you can give the name of the file or the files i can say a.txt b.txt c.txt cool right so if i say this so you can see now we have these three files you can also see here we have a b c the text files so before we continue with our git add command let's learn about this git status command so basically if i can see git status here if i say git status it will basically give me the current status of our working directory okay so the current status of our working directory is we don't have a commit yet and these three files are not tracked by git yet so if you want the git to track this file so you can say git add but when we say git add if you remember here we have either file or we can also add files right so that means if you want to add a single file then i can say a dot txt and let me check the status again and you can see changes to be committed so the file which i just added here the color becomes green that means it is ready to be committed but these files are not yet tracked by git so we cannot commit these files so if you want to add these multiple files you can say git add dot this basically means add all the files in this particular folder if you want to add a single file then you can say git add and the, the name of the file and if you want to add all the files then you can say git add and dot which is basically means everything in this folder and let's check the status again and you can see we have all the three files in green which is basically ready to be committed so let's continue so we have the next commit git commit so before we continue with the git commit let's learn about git log which is basically help us view the commit history so you can say if we say git log basically it says your current branch main does not have any commits yet which means that we don't create any commit yet but before that let's go and create a commit we can say git commit dash m and the message added three files you can see we have the command git commit and we have this dash m which basically means the message and we add the message we want to convey in this particular quotation right when i run this command it will create a commit so it says that it made a commit of this particular id now i can say git log again so you can see it creates a new commit so this is basically a hash so i can identify this as the 
ID of this particular commit. That means, let's say 10 days from now, I want to come back to this point. That means I can always use this ID or this hash to revert back to this particular commit. So basically, you can understand this as a ID of that particular snapshot. And here you can see when was the commit made and who made the commit. So basically, this is Pratap Sharma. And what commit did he do? Basically, he added three files, right? So if I check my status now, you can see we are on the main branch and we don't have anything to commit. So we already committed the changes. So far, we have learned about our basic git commands. So now let's learn about git branch command. So what's a branch? A branch is basically a Xerox copy, a photocopy of that particular branch. So basically, I have this main branch. If I want to create the same snapshot of this particular branch to another branch and I want to work on that, it means that I don't want to make changes on the main branch, but I want to test certain feature on the other branch, like for example, branch A, right? So let's learn about the grid branch command. The first command we want to learn is a git branch. So this will basically help us list all the branches. As you can see, if I say git branch, currently I have only one branch, which is basically the main branch. Okay. So let's continue with the next command. So basically, why do we need a branch? We need a branch because we want to create a copy of our original branch. And so that we can make our changes there, we can test. And then once we are done, we can request to merge that particular branch to this branch, right? So how can we create a branch? So in order to create a branch, you can use this command git branch and the name of the branch. So basically, if I can say git branch and I can say new branch. Okay. So if I check my git branch, so now you can see I have two branches, basically the main branch and the newly created new branch. Cool, right? So in the next command, let's learn how we can go to that particular branch. Because if you can see now, we are currently in the main branch, right? So how can I go to that particular branch, which I just created, new branch? So we can use the command git checkout in the name of the branch. Basically, it will help us switch to that particular branch. I can say git checkout new branch. Hmm. Right. So basically it's switched to the branch, new branch. So currently I am in the new branch. Cool. Right. And so currently what I did was I say that git branch, new branch, I give the name of the branch and I do git checkout new branch. So if I want to do this, both of the thing in the single command, then it will be basically git checkout minus B. Basically this means a checkout to this particular branch. If it doesn't exist, then create it. I can say git checkout dash B and I'll say new branch two. So you can see, so I have directly switched to a new branch, new branch two in a single command. Cool, right? So I can say git branch. So now I have three branches and I'm currently in the new branch two. Cool. Let's continue. Let's say I have these three branches. Okay. And then I want to delete this new branch. So how can I do that? So for that, it's simple. We can say git branch dash D and the name of the branch. So I can say git branch dash d and new branch so the branch new branch was deleted if i check git branch now we don't have any branch with the name new branch right so now let's learn about our remote repositories so far we we're working on a branch or on the git repositories which was in our local let me go back to our main i can say git checkout main Right. So we were working with our local repository. As you remember in the previous slide, I talked about there can be a local repository and there can be a remote repository. So in our case, we can have a remote repository in different Git hosting platforms like GitHub, GitLab, Bitbucket and so on. So in this example, I'll be using GitHub. Okay. Let me create a new repository in the remote. So I can say Git, Git tutorial, right? And let me just leave it a public and let me create a repository. Okay, we have created a new repository. So this repository is basically in our GitHub in the remote repository. So if we check this, we don't have any files or anything here, but I want to have these files in our remote repository as well, right? Or there can be a case when like I'm a new developer, I joined a company and now I want to work in their project and they have that project set up in their GitHub repository. I want to get that particular repository in my machine. So how can we do that? So for that, we have this command called git clone, which is basically the remote URL, right? But now, since we don't have anything here, so I don't think it really makes sense to clone this repo. So I'll show you later on in the section how we can clone this, right? So we have our git initialized here. So let's 
continue the next command so now we can say git remote add name and the url right so this is a git repository in my local i want to add the remote repository in this particular repo so how can i do that so as you can see here it gives me the command how exactly i can do this right so this is my remote repository okay but let me use ssh this is my remote repository right so as you can see from the command it says git remote add name and the url right so let's do that git remote add and what is the name basically if you can see the name is basically a origin right origin and the url basically what is the url you can see here we have the url from here this is an ssh url or this is an https url right so if you want to work with this ssh so let me help you understand how you can do that go to your setting go to your profile and go to this ssh and spg settings go to this ssh and gpg keys and go to add new ssh key and now if you want to add the new ssh key then you can basically say so let me create a new terminal so if you want to add the ssh key then you should first generate the ssh key so you can say ssh key gen okay so it says that enter the file in which you want to save the key so let's say github right and let's not enter the passphrase and let me skip it so now we have this particular key so if i want to add this particular key to my github so you can see we have stored the public key of this git in this particular github file so you can say cat and you can say github dot pub so this is basically the public key cool right so we should copy this key and we should go ahead and add in our ssh key and you can give the title here any title and you can add this ssh key as so i've already added so i can skip this and i can go ahead and use our ssh url okay so for now i don't really need this so let me just remove okay so let me close this terminal as well so now let me add that origin url okay origin okay so now i have my local repo here i have my remote repo here right i have added my remote repo url here but somehow i need to communicate between them right so for that we have the next command basically git push so let's say git push so this is the first time i'm pushing basically i need to set an origin i haven't set my origin yet so you see it says that the current branch main has no upstream branch to push the current branch and set the remote as upstream use git push there's a set upstream origin main so this we have to do for the first time because we don't have the upstream yet okay okay so that means now whatever changes i have in this main branch in my local repository that should be reflected in my remote repository right yes so we have the three files which we created earlier cool so let's check out our next command so basically this is a git pull this will pull the latest changes from the remote repository okay so you can see like let's compare this to okay so i want to use that git pull but currently there is no new changes in my remote repository right so you can see we have these three files so let's go ahead and create a new file here. let's add a readme okay so this is a git tutorial we are learning git concepts right and let's commit changes so i'll come back to about this commit and all let's commit the changes okay so you can see in our remote repository we have this readme.md file but if you check our folder git tutorial we don't have the readme.md file right here also we don't have the readme.md file i want that readme.md file or i want the latest changes from the main branch in my remote repository to be present in the local repository so how can i do that so we can do by using git pull so if i run this command so it will go and pull the latest changes from my main branch so now you see we have this readme.md here so if i can say ls so we have a.txt b.txt c.txt and we have readme.md we have this readme.md now cool right and if you check git log so we should have a couple of commits because i made this commit earlier in the main branch right but i made this commit in my github if you remember when i add the readme file here i made a commit okay so let's continue so we have another command basically this is a git fetch okay so what will this do so try to understand the difference between git pull and git fetch so git pull it will pull latest changes from the remote repository okay and what will git fetch it will fetch changes from a remote without merging it so let's go in our github and let me add this like let me edit this file 
so we don't have anything here so let me add i have updated and let's commit the change so you can see i have updated this file okay so let's run the git fetch command so i can say git fetch so you can see the difference between git pull and git fetch it says compressing remote unpacking so this part is still the same right but if you can see here it updates our local file it says one file change and three insertion was there but here it doesn't mention anything about like having the changes in my current file right if i check my file a dot like if you remember i updated my a.txt so if i have this a.txt so you see it's still empty so it means that git pull will pull the changes from the remote repository and it will merge the changes but git fetch it will fetch the changes from a remote without merging like it fetches the changes but without merging the changes into my local so git fetch will be used only to understand like if there's any changes or if there's any update in my branches okay so let's learn about the next command git push origin dash dash delete so in the previous slide we learned how to delete the branch right let's go back to our git tutorial so you can see currently we have only single branch right now let me go to my new branch git checkout new branch to and let me add new file here so i can say touch d.txt so let me check the status i can say git status add d.txt i'll say git add git commit dash m i can say add at d file git status so i'm ready to push right so let me push so this is first time i'm pushing from this branch so i need to set up the upstream so you can basically see that git push set upstream origin and the name of the branch so let me just copy and paste okay so if i go back to my github and if i refresh now you should see we have a couple of branch basically main branch and the new branch too right so i want to delete this branch how can i do that so as you remember let's go back to our main okay and, and i want to delete this new branch too so first i can say git branch dash d and new branch name right so it says that this has been much rev and it says deleting branch new branch too then if i say git branch i don't have the new branch too anymore in my local okay but if i go and refresh my github we see that there is still this new branch too why is that because if you remember we have a local repository and we have a remote repository so when we say git branch dash the new branch to this basically deletes the branch locally only in the local repository but in order to delete this branch on the remote as well so we need to use this git push origin dash dash delete in the name of the branch so we can say let's run the command git push origin dash dash delete in the name of the branch let me copy this so you can see we have deleted our new branch too from the remote as well so let me refresh here so you can see we have only a main branch now we don't have the new branch to branch anymore right so now it's time to learn about few advanced commands so one is basically git checkout dash so for that let's create a new branch git checkout dash b in the name of the branch i'll say new branch again okay so i'm currently in the new branch so now let's say i want to check out to the main branch again to the previous branch let's say i came from the main branch to this new branch i want to check out back to that particular previous branch which is main branch so i can say git checkout dash so you can see we have now switched to our branch main so let's run that again so i'll go back to our new branch simple right okay so let's learn about the next command so we have this git config so what is this git config it will help us configure the name email etc okay if i say git config so you can see we can have the configuration in three locations one can be in a global location one can be in the system location and one can be in the local location okay or also we can have a configuration based on the work tree so if you remember in the previous slide or in the previous example when we go to this git folder let me do ls you can see we have the config here right so let's check what exactly we have in this config cat config so you see we have here the core all this we really don't have to bother about it we have this user here so when i say email equal to this email so that means basically this particular email will be added in our commit message 
and we have this remote origin so when we say origin basically this is the url which we have added and it says that url is this right so whenever i say git pull or push and then it will go and pull or push to this particular repository using this origin and so on and if you want to list all the config of this particular git folder then you can say git config dash dash local so we can say git config dash dash local and you can say user okay so you can see we have the config as in, in the email so when i say git config this is local user.email so i get the email which was added in the config of this particular local so i have different configuration in my global settings which i cannot show you right now because i have to mess it up again so this is exactly what we are learning about right or if i don't pass this local okay and let me try to grab the user dot name okay so you should get the name from my global config which is basically pratap sharma right but if i said dash dash local i don't have the name set up in my local config so it should basically empty we don't have anything in our local configuration right and then we have this git reset which is used to undo any commits or file etc right so let's pull the latest change from our remote okay so if i say git log so basically we have these three commits right i want to go back to this particular commit right so how can i say that so i can say git reset head head means the tip of the commit and i can go back by one and if i enter it says on stage it changes after reset at the txt so if i say git status and if i check my git log again you see we have only two commits so if you want to see the difference in this file so you can say git diff so this will give the difference of the changes in our file so it says that i have updated so we added this message from our github and this is not added in our branch now so let's add that git add git commit dash m some message i can say git push so now the problem is if i say git log this has changed now right because earlier if you see the commits so to do the commits you can go to this commits we have three commits right we have updated at txt but we don't have that updated at txt in this anymore so now the local repository and the remote repository is diverged it's different now so for that if i want to push i can say dash f so when i say dash f it basically means by please forcefully push this if i go and refresh the commits now so update a.txt commit is no more added here okay so let's learn about merging branches so we have learned about branches in git so we can merge two branches by having this three types of concept one is rebase one is squash and merge and the other is simply merge right so let's learn them one by one so what's a rebase it integrates changes with a linear history so you can see we have this main branch and we created a new branch out of this okay and now when we rebase this branch the commits are added linearly so if you can see the advantage of this one is we can always go back to the particular commit so we can always go back to this commit this commit or this commit right so we don't lost any history okay so let's try to have this in our branch i'm in the main branch so if i say git log i have these three commits so let me check out to the new branch okay so let me say git status so i don't have anything here let me ls so i have all these three files right so now let me go ahead and add a new file let me say d.txt okay so now you can see i have a new file here so let me commit so let me say git add d.txt git commit dash m added the file and git push so let me set the upstream so this thing we will do for the first time and let me update the d.txt file so i can say echo and i'll say hello to the basically our d.txt okay so if i get my d.txt you can see we have this hello in that particular file right so now let me say git status i've modified the d.txt and then let's say git add d.txt git commit dash m modify the file right so let me push again okay 
so in order to make the same changes here you can see i have three changes right so i created this new branch from this particular commit but after that there was a new commit again in this main branch okay so let me check out to my main branch again so we can say git checkout dash so in the previous branch so let me update our a.txt git or i can say echo hello a to our a.txt git status so i've updated my a.txt so i can say git add a.txt git commit dash m updated a file and let me push okay so if i check my log so basically i have four commits here so i've added a new commit but if i check my git branches so i have this new branch right so let me go back to the, the new branch so i can say git checkout dash let me check the log again so you see so i have this commit here and after that i have this commit basically this was the md file and here i created a new file right add d file and i modified the file d right so i did this in the new branch so now i want all the changes from this new branch to the main branch so let me go to my main branch so i'm in the new branch like sorry git checkout so i'm in the main branch so now i can say git rebase new branch so if i want all the changes from my new branch to the main branch so i can say git rebase new branch so you can see we have successfully rebased and updated our ref we can if i can say my status so our branch have diverged and we have four and two different commits each respectively use git pull to merge the remote branch into yours you can say git pull okay so basically we have divergent branch and we need to specify how to reconcile them right so i can use git config pull i can say rebase to be true since i want to rebase it so for this local only so i'll say pull dot rebase to be a true so let me say git pull again so we have successfully rebased and update our ref so let me say git status we have some changes in my local so i can say git push okay so we have successfully rebased our two branches like the main branch and the new branch too so if we go to our github and if you see our commits so now you can see this all four commits were done in the main branch right but added the file and modified the file these two changes were done in the other branch so you can see we have all the commit history here okay so this way if you see the graph here so this way we don't lost any history of our commit okay so the next thing is we can have squash and merge what it basically means is if we have 10 commits in a particular branch we can convert that 10 commits into a single commit and then merge as you can basically see here i have created a new branch out of here i've made that two commits but when i merge to my main branch i basically merge it as a single commit okay so this is squash and when i talk about merge so basically when i simply merge so i still have the history of the branch and, and a new merge commit is created here so when i go to this merge commit i can basically go and see that i have other two commits in this particular branch okay so basically this is the main difference i showed you how to rebase and merge is simple if you want to learn about merge so let's go to our git checkout new branch so this is different from our main branch now so let me merge this so basically this will be basically git merge main right when i merge and let me push this so you can see in my commit okay so let's go to our branch new branch so you see a new commit message is created here right even though i, I didn't make any commit right but when i merge some changes from one branch to the other so at that time a new message is created okay so squash and merge is simply converting all the 10 commits or 9 commits into a single commit and then adding to our main okay so it condenses multiple commits into one and git merge it combines branch changes with preserve history you can see so when we merge this it still have the history of the commits and here we don't have the history of the commits but here since we have the linear now we have the history also and we don't have the preserve history we have a linear history we have a preserve history here so the, the main difference is this
So in my opinion, we should use a rebase if we want to have a linear history. But if all those 9 or 10 commits doesn't really make sense, then we can condense them to a single commit. And also, if we want to preserve the history of the branch, then we can use merge. So let's learn how to resolve a merge conflict. So what is a merge conflict? When multiple developers are working on the same file, like let's say a developer A works on this file also and a developer B also works on this file a.txt, then in that case, there can be a conflict while merging, right? So let's say we have our repository here and let me create another branch. Let me say git checkout dash b new branch. Okay. And here, let me update this a.txt. Okay. So I can say echo updated from you can say new branch right so let me write this to our a.txt but it means i'm updating this txt file okay so let's check the status get status so we have one change so let's add git commit dash m updated by new branch okay and now let's go back to our main branch and also let's do the same thing let's update our a.txt and let's say update it from main branch okay so let's check the status we can say git status we have changed one file and say git add git commit dash m updated by main okay if you can see i have this a.txt file i myself being a developer I worked on this a.txt file on this main branch okay and then there was another developer developer b who worked on this a.txt file from the other branch which was from the new branch right so now we have the same type of content in our a.txt as well as in our new branch so what will happen if i try to merge that new branch to my main so a conflict should occur right so let's try git merge new branch so you can see it says that auto merging a.txt failed merge conflict in a txt automatic merge failed fix conflicts and then commit the results so if I, if I see git status then you see we have unmerged path and we have this a.txt so if i check this a.txt let's say vim a.txt so you can see i have updated hello a we have these two lines here so we are having the line updated from main branch and we have updated from new branch so basically when we say this is the head and when you say this is the new branch so what it means is this is the change from the main branch okay and this change was done in this new branch so now we need to resolve this conflict okay so how can we resolve this conflict so i can either pick the change from my main branch or i can either pick the change from my new branch but it seems that i need both of the lines right so how can i fix this so rather than going from this vim so let me close this okay so let me open this project using our vs code so now you can see if you go to this source control here you can see i need to merge this change so let me make it large so that you can, can see it so i have this a.txt so now from here you can see that accept current change accept incoming change or accept both the changes so in our case i think we need to accept both the changes because i want to keep this change from the main branch and also i want to keep the change from this new branch if you want to just accept current change which is basically the main branch you can accept the current branch so you can see updated from main branch or you can accept from the incoming change which basically means that the branch we are merging so basically i can have the change from the new branch or if i want to accept both the changes i can do accept both changes so now I will have changes from both of the branch right and after that what we have to do we need to add this to our staging area okay and so far we were committing our changes from this terminal we can also commit our changes from this source control so now i can write a message here so that the message all there merge branch new branch so now if i say command enter this will add a new commit and now i can push so there are multiple ways you can work with git you can either go fully with our terminal or you can go with something like source control in our vs code
but i recommend you to go by terminal because this will help you understand the commands and also learn the commands the more you type the more you'll remember okay so we have learned how to resolve a merge conflict so let's learn about dot git ignore file so dot git ignore is a configuration file used in git to specify files and directories that should be ignored by git when tracking changes in a repository okay so let's go back to our git repo so let me create a new file dot git ignore right so i'm in the new branch right so let me go to our main let me do it from my main okay so if you check ls so we don't have any git ignore here and neither it is visible here right because it's a hidden file so if i say vim dot git ignore basically it's empty right so if you can see here like we can specify what all directories i should ignore okay so let's say i want to ignore any name let's say we can ignore like let's say i so in vim if you want to write anything you can say i which is basically insert and i can say star dot log so what i'm saying here is please ignore any files that ends with log okay so let me save this so you can say colon wq okay so let's go and add a new file let's say touch and then i can say debug log debug dot log but now if i say git status it doesn't track that debug dot log right but if i say touch debug dot a lot lot not log but lot and if i say status again so you can see git is tracking this debug dot lot file but it doesn't track the debug dot log file right so why should we use dot git ignore it helps us prevent unnecessary or sensitive files from being accidentally committed to the repository and also it enhances our repository cleanliness and it reduces clutter okay so you can see here if you want to ignore compiled files so you can say star.class or star.jar or if you want to ignore like node.js modules then you can say node modules and if you want to ignore logs so we can ignore them by based on the folder or the file like any folder from logs will be ignored or any file that ends with log will be ignored okay so this is about our git ignore so now let's learn about git sub modules git sub modules allows us to include another git repository as a subdirectory within our own repository and it is useful for managing external dependencies or including separate projects within our project if we want to add a sub module we can run this command git sub module add and the repo url and if we want to update our sub modules then we can use git sub module update dash dash remote right so let me show you one example so let me go to my repo this is my repository my blog post repository so if you can see here i have this pratapsharma.io and also i have this blog post so i'm using this blog post which is another repository as a sub module in this repository okay so this basically means that i am using this blog post repository as a sub module in this repository and whatever changes i've made here i can use it in this repository cool right so to add a sub module you can say git sub module and then we can add our repo url so let me just give an example so currently we don't have a sub module here right so i can say git sub module add so let me add one repo url right for example let me add this repository as a sub module right so i can say git sub module add and the url so you can see when i add this as a sub module it will clone that particular sub module and you can say if i check my folder now you can see i have this open telemetry as a sub module now right i can go into this open telemetry i can access the files and then now i can use all these files as a module in my git tutorial now which is cool right and let's say there's some changes in this open telemetry repository like a developer a go and make some changes there i need the latest change here so to do that i can use this git sub module update dash dash remote okay so these are the few git tips i want to provide to my students or to my viewers so the first tip is use meaningful commit messages so the commit messages should convey the real message what exactly the developer did in that particular commit so if you made changes to the file so then mention what exact changes you have done there if you have deleted a file then you can say file a was deleted if you made some changes then please use a meaningful commit message and regularly commit and push changes why 
since we're using a electronics device then it is very uncertain that it will always work so there may be some cases when the machine may crash or power cut may occur and so on right so in that case regularly committing and pushing the changes will help you stay up to date and in terms of any consequences our data will be protected and it will not be lost and the third tip is to collaborate and communicate with your team the more you collaborate with the team and communicate with your team then the less problem you will face or the less hassle you will face and git is your safety net so experiment without fear so now i was experimenting with by adding a sub module so it doesn't really happen now i can simply go and remove this folder then everything will be back to normal again right so experiment without fear so in this git crash course we learn about local repositories we learn about git basic commands we learn about branches we learn about git remote repositories we learn about sub modules we learn how we can merge two branches by rebase by squash and merge or by simply merging and also we learn like we understand a few tips about the git so i hope this was helpful for you so see you in another video or in another section